but that worked really well nice nice simple setup easy to carry easy to set up so i didn't know if i was going to be able to see this tonight so i'm really pleased that we've come out to the dark skies up to our dark sky site But in terms of just a grab and go setup, something you can pick up with one hand, be outside observing, this is absolutely fantastic for me. So welcome to the Refreshing Views Garden. We have a treble coincidence today. We've got one, a clear sky, two, it's a Friday night, so it's the weekend, and three, there's no moon around. So tonight I am meeting up with some friends up on Salisbury Plain, which is our nearest dark sky site, and hopefully enjoy some of this beautiful spring weather. So my plan is to test out some of my grab and go kit, and I'll just talk you through that now. So this is the heart of my grab and go setup, which is a William Optics 90mm Meg Ray, second hand. This is new to me as of a few months ago, and I'm really enjoying this. It's so easy to carry, beautiful wide field of view, very different from my C11 in the observatory, which is obviously a very high powered telescope. So really nice con contrast. And I've got the 12 volt dew heater, and that will plug into the dew controller. So this is what we're going to set up. We've got an AZ4 out azimuth mount. There's my Lidl's observing chair, my Lidl's ironing chair. There's the table, camera tripod, bag of stuff. There's all my cold weather clothing boots underneath it. Next up is the camera bag and this has got all the eyepieces in. So we have, this is one of my favourite eyepieces, an APM 20mm 100 degree apparent field of view. So in the Megray that gives me a 4 degree field of view at about I think it is 27 times magnification so really wide field of view absolutely stunning looking at things like the Sword of Orion or the, the Pleiades star cluster in this absolutely stonking Find scope goes on the side there's a diagonal and a bar low one of those clip-on red lights so that's what I use for my setup on the telescope and there's my red hand torch flashlight has a little filter wheel on to change the brightness and you can make it go red and white. And I put a little piece of plastic uh, milk bottle casting in the front just to act as a diffuser. And there is the dew controller. So that what provides the power from the 12 volt battery to keep the heater warm. So next up is the binder viewer. The, this is one of the linear binder viewers and it comes in this really nice Peli case. And there it is. So a Techno Sky Binder Viewer, and it has the corrector lens in the front of the nose piece. So even though your eyepieces are in effect up here, you don't need any optical correctors for it to reach focus. So in effect, this has become just one big eyepiece. And the nice thing is, of course, you've got two eyes looking at the field of view. And I use my 30 millimeter Naglas, that's my primary eyepiece. So I get a two degree field of view at about 40 something times power. So two degrees, 40 power is a really nice way to observe the night sky, a very wide field of view. And because that is an optical corrector, because that is the corrector lens in there to allow it to reach focus, it doesn't react very well to putting it into a bar low. So I also have a pair of second hand Russian towel barlows times two barlows. So instead of putting one barlow in on the nose piece, I have to put two barlows in for the on each eyepiece. So that's a nice way observe, to observe. And then I have my Bino Bandit, and that, that's as a, a light shade, just goes over the front of the eyepieces. And then for my deep sky observing, I've got the Intersolarum Deep Sky Atlas, which is a beautiful star atlas, really nice. I really like this. I'm looking forward to using this properly out under the nice dark skies of Salisbury Plain. Sketching kits. And the notebook as well. Let's go to the end. So yes, a few 
little practice sketches so I'm going to look forward to filling this up and I'll show you what I what I drew and what I sketched tonight and so what I'll also do tonight when I'm observing with the telescope I'll leave my camera up and running obviously the camera's on the tripod you are sitting on my tripod you're in my camera and I've got the nifty 50 close-up lens and I've got the 14 millimeter Samyang f 2.8 so that's a really nice wide field of view 90 degree field of view and then the nifty 50 for close-ups and then for my night sky photography side that's just a phone clip CLS filter which I've yet to really use I uh, must try this out one day and then there's the and then there's the intervalometer and then that'll be used to control the camera so I can leave that clicking away take a time lapse of the night sky oh and most important of all spare batteries for the for the camera and in the front I have one of these lithium power packs so 12 volt uh, with a USB as well so 12 volt power pack and that's something astonishing 100 so that's a 9 amp hour capacity so plenty of juice in there and that that'll run for several days running my little dew heaters so pretty good and say so it's tight it's not much bigger I mean it's a small book size you know can of coke size sort of thing and that's plenty of power for several days running this little setup and then last but not least I've got the 15 by 50 Canon binoculars so 15 by 50 Canon binoculars and if you remember I made a video about these earlier in last year so that image stabilized so a really nice way to observe the sky and I put the extra um, what do you call it tube extensions dew shields on the front as well so that helps cut down the glare and just helps keep the lens clear of dew So this is the AZ4 out azimuth mount and that's got the tube ring still on so when I get there I'll just put the telescope in there. But it's a very simple, literally is, up, down, left, right, there's nothing more to that on the big stainless steel tripod. So no motors, no polar alignments, nothing, literally just set the telescope, put the tripod on the ground put the telescope on top there's nothing else to it that the downside of that is you've got to learn the sky you've got to learn how to star hop but for this nice wide angle setup it's absolutely perfect so I love using the AZ4 mount. What I really enjoy about this is that there's no polar alignment, there's no power, you just literally plonk it down and start observing. You've got to learn the night sky there, that's the downside, there's no go-to, you've got to work out where things are in the sky and start a hop to where they are. But beautifully simple. My only thing I don't like about this is that when you have a big eyepiece on the end, so if I've got my bino here or this big 20, 20 millimeter, 100 degree eyepiece, is that the telescope becomes unbalanced when you're using it so it tends to tilt a lot so you then at different angles even though it's balanced there when you tilt it up so the center of gravity gets thrown off at different angles so quite happily there looking towards the horizon quite happily balanced take my hand off the handle move it to there so you end up at higher and higher elevations, tightening and tightening up the little, the little tension knob on the altitude axis. And then of course it gets stiffer when you're at low altitudes. It's something I've got used to, I've used it a few times. But just one thing to be aware of is that you do tend to be tightening this up, slackening it off. Obviously the azimuth doesn't matter, it just sits there quite happily, you can leave that quite happily, it's not being pulled left and right, it literally is the altitude. So if you do have a telescope and you put the big eyepiece on the end, just be aware of that, something you have to do with. I quite like having this handle here, it's really useful. Um, you just got to watch you don't bang your eye into it in the dark, you know, when you forget it's there. So, um, but I quite like it, it means you're not 
pulling on the eyepiece and pulling on the diagonal, which can't be a good thing for the for the telescope to do. Um, so yeah, very simple mount, easy to use, no moving parts. Hasn't got any slow motion control, so you do have to move it by hand. You don't, you can't twiddle the little lever. But just use that, just as a train goes past. Right, I'm going to quickly pack everything into the car now, and I will see you on Salisbury Plain under a dark sky. So I've loaded everything into the car now, really excited to go along. We're meeting up with two friends when I get up there. So the first is Lawrence, he's bringing his camera and his tripod along. And then the second is Peter, one of my friends as well from the Astronomy Club. So it's really nice to get out under those nice dark skies again. So I've just arrived on Salisbury Plain. As you can see, I'm deliberately keeping the, the car lights off now so you won't be able to see me at all. So what I'm going to do is set the tripod up, set the telescope up, get everything up nice and running. And as my eyes get used to the dark, it takes about half an hour, 45 minutes to your eyes to get fully dark adapted. I'll swing across, I'll first of all start off looking at the Orion Nebula, let my eyes get used to the dark. So now my eyes are used to the dark, I've swung across from Orion, from the Orion Nebula, and I'm now enjoying the views, the wonderful wide field of view of the telescope to enjoy the Rosette Nebula. Now the Rosette Nebula is quite a big object, you do need that wide field of view to take it all in. And that's what this refractor does in space. I wouldn't be able to enjoy a view like this through the big Celestron C11 back at home. So I've gone old school now. I've got the notebook out. I'm just joining in, join, bleh. I've just drawn the stars that make up the field of view in the little open cluster that's at the center. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna turn all the lights off. Just let my eyes get that final bit of dark adaption. I put the ultra high contrast filter in the eyepiece as well and I'll draw the nebulosity in. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to see this tonight, so I'm really pleased that we've come out to the dark skies, up to our dark sky site. But there it is, there's the sketch of the Rosette Nebula as seen through a four inch refractor. So you've got this open cluster in the middle, another open cluster up there, and this wonderful arc of nebulosity, this wonderful ring of nebulosity, a little brighter region of nebulosity there, and then the open cluster in the core. What a wonderful sight, what a wonderful night. So it's just starting to pack up now. Highs are pretty tired, it's about 1.30 in the morning. But that worked really well. Nice, nice simple setup. Easy to carry, easy to set up. But no motors, no go to, no air thing there. So I've having to do traditional star hopping. And you can see there we've had a frosty night. You can see the frost forming on the on the table. Yes, this outer star wave, uh, 157 millimeters. Well, I can't think of the name of the description of the optics, but um, it's fairly simple. But, um, it's a beautiful scope, though, isn't it? Look at that. I didn't realise it was red when we set up because, of course, it was it was all dark. But yeah, you can see the frost on the. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 so this has got a, it's got a three inch um, uh, focus on there. Which... What eyepiece are you using, Peter? Um, well, these are some, some cheap old things. That, um, pans view. Um, you know, oh, I've, pan of views, yeah. Um, I, I've bought a couple of them. But I've, yeah, I've, I've got a set of um, uh, Scientific Explorer things, I think. Uh, which um, uh, these things, Explore Scientific. Oh, those are the nice ones, aren't they? They're quite nice um, eyepieces. They go well with that. Um. So, do you think you bought enough kit out for a quick session on Salisbury Plain? Well, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if, I, whether it's a thing that you were involved in. Did, did you go um, looking at an eclipse or something like that? Um, 
got up to Birmingham and somebody had missed a little tiny bolt or something like that for their equipment. Oh really? <laughs> what they went all that way and then found um, they didn't? Yeah. Oh and you've got the, have you made, is that a homemade? Yes. Pillar extension, yeah, so how did you make that? To that um, that uh, goes with the Skywatcher stuff. Yeah, um, okay. Which I had to modify to fit this. Um, it's, I mean, it's, I usually got a bloke who um, do a bit of machining for me, but he is not as enthusiastic as he used to be. So, but the wooden one is is perfectly satisfactory. And that's what you made. So you made that, or you just made? Yeah, the... yeah. Just made them. All. Oh, this 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 is a bought, but the modification. Oh, to make the adapter it fit. for the. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get. Um, that it's um well if there's any criticism of that mount although if i knew more about it i could probably do something about it. if when that was um connected straight up on here which is designed to do the um though in certain circumstances uh this used to touch the legs oh we see oh that's um, why so i put that on there and stop that problem um stop the eyepiece hitting the legs yeah um Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for showing us around. Thanks for the views as well. I really enjoyed that. So, uh, it's a nice photo. So, so, um... so I don't know if you can hear that in the background. That's the sound of an armour column somewhere in the background. So I just stopped on the way back and there literally is a line of military vehicles just driving across the plain. You can see all their flashing lights over there in the distance, vehicle after vehicle after vehicle, all rumbling away. Right, what a beautiful night, have a safe drive.